Hey everyone, it's Natalie. So I'm back again to get today to do another video. Not really sure what the video is going to be about, but I think we'll just kind of speak in general terms of different situations. Um, one thing that um, I can't stress enough to everyone out there that is dealing with these narcissistic parents um, or in-laws is that staying silent during this time, having no communication, even if you are in contact with these people, um, is the best weapon you have in your arsenal. Throughout the years, I stayed silent when I was around these people. I did not communicate with them. I did not share anything with them. I really just kept my life private. And sometimes my husband would overshare with his parents and I would have to talk to him about, hey, you know, this has something to do with me and I really didn't want it to be shared. Do you mind not sharing things about my life with your parents? If you decide that you want to share something about yourself or, or whatever with your parents, that's fine. But please just, you know, keep me out of that conversation because what, what happened was because my in-laws used to tell my husband in private all the time, Natalie must not like us. She never talks to us. She never starts conversations. She never shares her life about us, uh, about, uh, with us. And, um, so my husband would tell me that. And so what they would do was prod and poke into my husband, um, in a giving information about my life. And so what happened was, um, he would share some things and because he did that, what they did is they took that information and twisted it into a perceived notion of what they assumed about my family. So because I didn't ever share with them about my family, they they perceived that I had a horrible childhood. I had a horrible parents and, and, and uh, brothers and all this. And so they would say little things whenever I was around them. Like, um, is it okay if I ask you how your mother's doing? Or, or is that um, something that you don't really want to talk about? And it's like, why would they say that? And it's because the way that they perceived me, me to be and the way that they thought that I was a horrible person in their eyes, they just automatically assumed that I came from a horrible family. Um, and so they would say things to my husband like, um, did Natalie have a traumatic uh, childhood? Is that why she never talks about her parents? And things like that. Um, and then what they would do is because they perceive that, um, they would use that as an excuse to my husband of why he shouldn't be with me. Well, Natalie has so much baggage. That's why you shouldn't be with her. She has mental problems. She's been through a lot and, and um, she has psychological problems and, and you really don't want to be involved with somebody that, that has mental illness. And so these are like the manipulation things that they would do to convince my husband that I wasn't a good person because I come from this horrible family, which they knew still to this day, know nothing about my family. Okay. They know absolutely nothing. And I find it funny that they actually recognized that I didn't share my life with them by going and telling my husband these negative things like, oh, your girlfriend or wife, whatever, doesn't like me because she never shares. Well, really, not only um, 
were they snooping trying to get that information from my husband but what they were really truly doing was trying to convince my husband that i wasn't a good person because i didn't want a relationship with them and so they used that as a weapon um or they weaponized me not wanting to uh talk about my life with them as an excuse of that I'm a bad person and that why would you want to be with Natalie who doesn't want a relationship with us? So they do these little things to convince your partner that you're not a good person. And so the, and the reason why they do that is because the narcissist always has to have control. And so the only way that they're going to be able to have that control is having things on you. And if you don't give though that information to them that they can twist and manipulate um and and weaponize against you and use against you then they don't have anything on you to manipulate and so that is why it is so important to stay silent around these people if you are at a dinner party or a holiday event or talking to them on the phone or or whatever it is um what i would do was just be cordial i would be polite um if she tried to trigger me by saying nasty things um and it wasn't like blatantly nasty it was condescending things um it was gaslighting it was um just just doing like being passive aggressive and things like that where it didn't seem like because she did it in front of people um it wouldn't seem to those other people that she was being rude but even though she was towards me and she knew that I knew she was being rude towards me because they don't want to get caught being that way towards you because they have been convincing everyone around them that you are the problem, that you are the reason why the relationship isn't working. But in reality, they are doing things to get under your skin, to get that reaction. And that reaction, when you step out of character, is what they go and tell everyone that is what uh that is who she is see i've been and the narcissist has already done that they've already went around and spoiled your character so when you do step out of character they go back and say see i told you remember when i told you that's how she is you just saw it for yourself and that's why it's really important that if you are triggered in the moment just to walk away um they want you to talk crap to them they want you to step out of character they want you to say nasty things especially in front of other people and what they'll do if you do get triggered and you find yourself <clears throat> doing this they will put they'll do a big scene they'll start crying why are you so mean to me i don't understand i'm so nice i do everything for you that way everyone that's around them at that the place that you might be um has sympathy for the narcissist instead of you who was triggered by the fact that the narcissist was nasty to you and what I never understood is that when it's common sense, if somebody is triggered and they say something nasty or they step out of character, there's a reason behind it. And I never figured out why the people that see you triggered back up the narcissist instead of backing you up because the narcissist is the one that triggered you. The narcissist is the one that said and did something to upset you. But instead of them having pity for you and saying, oh, wow, that narcissist shouldn't have said or did those things to you, Natalie. I'm really sorry that that happened to you. Instead, what they do is they go to the narcissist and they comfort them. And so it's a very 
tricky situation because before you entered into the picture, um, these family and friends have been around the narcissist a lot longer. And so the narcissist has figured out how to manipulate them um, into believing everything that the narcissist says. And they also, those people are looking for validation from the narcissist. And that is why they are always on the narcissist's side. See, they are craving that relationship with the narcissist because the narcissist plays that little uh, cat and mouse game with these people. And when you're playing that cat and mouse game, um, it makes that person who wants a relationship with the, the evil person, uh, it makes them want to try harder to get that person to like them, to accept them, to, to find validation in that relationship with that person. And so, stupid fly, get away. Um, and so, what these, uh, and, and what these people do that the narcissist um, have, has manipulated because they're looking for acceptance from that person too. Maybe because uh, they have, uh, the narcissist has money or they, it could be a million things, right? What they do is they pretend to be your friend, right? And you really believe that they're your friend, that you can talk to them about stuff. And what they do is they, they might, and the flying monkeys might even say something negative about the narcissist to trick you into saying something negative about the narcissist so they can go back and tell the narcissist what you said. And then the narcissist will, will say, see, I told you she is the problem. It's not me. She blames me. I'm just that sweet little old lady or old man. And this, um, this new person that came into our family is causing so much commotion and, and heartache. And they'll say stuff like, well, uh, they'll tell their flying monkeys, friends and family, think about um, before she came, we didn't have any problems in our family, which they did, right? They had problems in their family, but they'll play off like they didn't because they're perfect, right? And so they'll say, well, ever since she came in, there's been so much chaos. So it's obviously not me, it's obviously her. And so that it, the main thing you can do is stay silent around these people if you have to be around them. Um, like, like I said, you can be cordial, but you if they ask you questions about your life or how things are going or your schooling or your children or, or whatever it is, you just simply say, Thank you for asking. Everything is going really well. That's it. That's all you say. And if they ask you something that you don't feel comfortable uh, answering, you can say, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't really feel comfortable sharing that at this time. I'm really sorry. No, no offense to you. I just, you know, that's very personal and I rather not really talk about that. So if they ask you about your family or if they ask you whatever it is, you can just say, that's private. Um, you know, I just really just rather not talk about it. And they're going to be offended by it, of course, you know, because, oh, you don't want to share with me. No, it's because I don't trust you and everything that I tell you, you twist, manipulate and use against me later on and use it as a weapon to get my spouse, my significant other, to leave me. So you might tell them something that's really sad or really happy, and they'll take that information, right? Instead of being happy for you or having pity for you or, or feeling sorry for you, and they use it as a way to um, convince your partner why they shouldn't be with you. It's crazy. Um, it's mommy dearest at its finest. And so, and a lot of people will be like, Natalie, why are you saying stay silent? Like, that's the worst thing you can do. When I am talking about staying silent, I am talking specifically about not sharing or over sharing with the narcissist. You do not stay silent when somebody is blatantly being nasty, rude, and condescending to you, to your face, 
You do not stay silent. What you do is you say in a calm, collective manner, wow, that was really rude. I think it's time for me to leave. You don't bicker with them. You don't fight with them. You don't start more drama. You literally look at them and say, wow, you're a really nasty person. I'm gonna go ahead and leave. Or if they're at your house, you can say, you know what, that was really uncalled for and I'd like you to leave, please. And they're gonna make up excuses. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do. No, please leave. You've upset me and I don't have anything else to say to you, please leave my house. Or if you're at their house, you'll basically just say the same thing, but leave their house. And if you, um, the bet, and the other thing I was gonna say is that if you do have to be around these people, go to their house. Don't let them come to your house. That way you can make up excuses to leave when you need to leave. Because when they're at your house, it's harder to get them out of your house and they nitpick at everything in your house and they nitpick at your cooking and your cleaning and your children raising and they might rearrange your furniture like they did with me and um, they might start cleaning your house and things like that which is super insulting right um, and so you don't really want them at your house because if they end up doing something that is offensive and you need them to leave they're going to throw a hissy fit and start crying. And everyone that's at your house is gonna look at you like you're the bad person for asking that person to leave. But if you go to their house and they do something that you don't like, you can excuse yourself and leave. And literally, you don't have to lie about it. I mean, you, if you need to make up a lie to leave, that's fine. But you could say, if you have children, you could say, Oh, well, we need to go ahead and go because I got to get the kids ready for bed or I have to do something for the kids. Or you could say, I have an errand to run. Um, you can say a, a million excuses or you blatantly, seriously, this is what I've done. Um, is when I was at their house and she was being nasty and I couldn't take it anymore after crying in the bathroom, um... After I cried in the bathroom, I got out, I, I got up and uh, I told my husband, I said, we need to leave. I said, if we don't leave soon, I'm going to end up decking your mom in the face. And he knew. Oh, honey, please don't let this fool you. I will deck a mofo in the face if I have to. I do not. I was raised with boys. Okay. I got, I got muscle. Okay. I got a six pack. Okay. I work out. I will deck somebody in the face if I have to, to protect myself. And he knew I wasn't playing. <laughs> and no, violence is not the answer. And I am kind of being a smart ass. Um, but he knew I was serious. And what I did was, after I got out of the bathroom and he saw how upset I was, I, uh, everybody was in the living room and I said, Jared, it's time to, uh, and I said this out loud in front of everyone. I said, Jared, it's time to leave because there are things that are happening right now that are making me feel super uncomfortable, unwelcomed, and hurting my feelings. And I just walked straight out of the door. And of course, I'm waiting in the car for 10 minutes while the narcissist is explaining to my husband this and that. And my husband stuck up, stuck up for me. And uh, when he got in the car and I asked him, I was like, what took so long? Oh, she started crying. She didn't mean it. And I, and he said, but I told her, I said, mom, I witnessed you being like that towards Natalie. How would you feel if somebody was saying and doing those things to you, mom? You, you were out of line. There was no reason for you to be cruel to Natalie like that. And yeah, it's time to go. If if you feel a certain way um, about Natalie, then, you know, why wouldn't she want to leave, mom? And if you have things negative that you um, can't hold in, then yeah, it's, it's time to leave. And you're saying inappropriate things. Like, you need to control your behavior because your behavior is not normal and it's nasty well jared i'm getting older i don't realize um that what i said was rude or or whatever and he because this is the thing about older people when they get older they have a sharper tongue they don't care anymore about hurting people's feelings because 
they're older. They just don't care anymore. And, um, and that's the problem with these narcissists is that they're getting older and they have no remorse of saying nasty things to anyone. There's no repercussions because what they do is they play the, the, the victim and make everyone feel bad when in fact they're the nasty one. So when I mean stay silent, I mean don't share your personal information and tell your husband not to do so either. If they ask you about things, you just give them very neutral answers. You end the conversation. If they continue to ask questions, you can say, I really don't feel like you know, answering questions right now, or I, I really don't feel comfortable answering that. But if somebody is being blatantly, blatantly rude to you, you 100% have the right to stick up for yourself. The only thing that I will say is when you do stick up for yourself, do it in a calm, collective manner. Do not act erratic. Do not act like a psycho because it looks bad on you and everyone around you will see that. And then when you leave, the narcissist will say, see, that is how she acts. But if you do it in a calm, mature way, nobody's gonna be able to say anything about it. And you know what, if anything, you, it, it looks better on you because if anyone is around and they see that you're being calm and you're stating the facts and you're not being nasty or ugly, they, you know what it does is it makes the narcissist look bad. And so people start waking up to the fact that the narcissist is being the ugly one. But if you go on a rampage and you start yelling and screaming because they hurt your feelings or they said something nasty, you look like the crazy one. And the goal is to make the narcissist look bad, not to make yourself look bad. Stay in character. Stay in character. Do not step out of character. This is what the narcissist wants. They want you to step out of character because they claim that is who you truly are. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, and guys, I, in the last month, have been in Grand Teton, um, Mount Rushmore, Sturges, Yellowstone, uh, some other places for the last month. So I have not gotten back to any emails and I also have um, my husband has an apartment in Iowa we have another place in Iowa and I was over there for a while and so I haven't returned a lot of emails um, and the other problem is I have returned 50 60 emails in the past few months with no no response so it's like I and, and me personally, like when I email someone, I really take time and effort into my wording, okay? And so if I'm taking time and effort to give you a sincere email and I don't get a response, it makes me not want to email anyone. And then I'll leave numbers who want life coaching or, you know, or, or a consultation and uh, I'll get the text message and then nothing ever happens. And um, so, and, and the thing is with me, I'm not just like, I'm not money hungry type of life coach. Uh, a lot of times I do all of my sessions um, just by donations, what you can afford. And some, a lot of times you can't afford it, that's fine. And I do it for free. Um, it, the reason why I even ask for, uh, any donation, I don't care if it's $5 or it's a cup of coffee or, or, or whatever is because as the first time that you talk to me usually takes about two hours. Okay. Because you're going through everything that's going on and, and, um, it takes time to talk about it. And then, you know, it, it's an hour of you telling me something and it's the hour of me telling you something. And then the next session might be an hour cause we work through the first thing. And so I'm spending hours of my time away from my family, um, to do life coaching. And so I, you know, I just, 
and I, and I I hate to even say this, I just feel like maybe, you know, a little donation or buying me a cup of coffee or something like that is is worth um my time. <laughs> and and I'm sorry if that seems rude. I, I really I really don't mean to come off that way. Um, so please don't take it that way and please, and please don't think that I started this channel because I wanted to make money or anything like that. I'm, dude, guys, I only make like 120 bucks a month on YouTube. It's like, and honestly, there's been times that I've talked to my husband because I know there's commercials and I'm like, dude, I'm here to reach people and people are clicking off my videos because of so many commercials and that hundred dollars is like nothing and I've been thinking about just demonetizing my channel um, because I'm here I, I want to help you know and all these damn commercials dude like it's getting it's interfering with people that actually need help and so I don't know you know it, it, the, I started this channel um, to reach other people in my situation because I was so alone for so long and had no one to talk to. And when I read people's emails and I read people's comments, I relate to you so much and you guys relate to me so much. And, um, you know, I've had men reach out to me saying, oh my gosh, Natalie, thank you so much. You've, you've opened my eyes. My wife has been telling me this for years. And sometimes that's the thing. Just because your wife or your husband is telling you that your parents are treating them bad um, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be convinced by that person. But if you find somebody like me, a third party, who has been through this, more than likely, um, and it's weird, but the spouse will listen to what the third party is saying and will wake up to what's really happening. And I've had a lot of men email me thanking me. Same thing with women. Um, and that's the other thing is like some of my comments, uh, men will come on. It's not just, it's not just the uh, husbands. It's also the wives' parents. Yes, 100%. This channel was off of my experience with my husband, but I try to kind of do it neutral uh, where I say partner or spouse or something. So that way men and women both can relate to this. But if you are a man uh, with a wife with narcissistic parents, just instead of um, when I say husband, just put wife in that because it works both ways. This It's the same scenario, same situation, just the wife or the husband. It's the same type of narcissistic parent. Uh, parenting. Um, and so, yeah, guys, I'm just so thankful for you guys. And um, I am so happy that I found other people out there. I'm happy that uh, some of my techniques are helping you guys. I read in the comments that Natalie, oh my gosh, you're right. Your techniques are helping me. They're working. And you know, what's crazy is I came up with these techniques on my own because I didn't know what else to do. I had I had to combat this some way and I just didn't know. So it was by through trial and error that I came up with these techniques and they ended up working. Some failed, some worked, and now they're starting to work for other people. So I'm so happy that um, you found my channel, that I'm here to help. You've helped me tremendously not feel alone. Sometimes um, I am just overjoyed that I found a group of people that experience the same thing as me and and it makes me feel like no I wasn't going crazy you know and that's what I hear in the comments a lot oh my god I'm so glad that I found your channel I'm glad that I figured out it wasn't me and I wasn't the crazy one <laughs> all right oh my god and school is starting on the first Guys, I get to meet my new sixth graders. I am a special needs teacher. I do sixth, seventh, and eighth graders in my class. And uh, so we have a new group of students coming in. I'm super excited. I'm not happy about waking up at five o'clock in the morning because I've been staying up till 1 a.m. and waking up at eight or nine. So I gotta start training myself to go back to sleep by nine to wake up at five. But I will say this. Sometimes waking up is a you know what, but 
by the time I leave school, I am so happy that I woke up at 5 a.m. because those children just bring me so much joy. Peace, love, and harmony. Love you guys. Bye.